Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Terms discuss further into polar coordinates and further into determining the area of a polar curve. And this time, look at an example, and we'll look at example one of doing that. And the example is right here, you know, which states um, find the area enclosed by one loop of the four leaf rows r equals to cosine two theta. And in fact, this was from example. Eight. So basically, first we're going to do is recall uh, right from example eight. My earlier video, I'll put that in the video description below. So from example eight, recall that the uh, this curve right here looks something like this. It's a four-leafed rose. If this is a polar axis, you start off from here and it goes like that, and then it yeah, actually then it goes downwards like this. It goes something like this. And then keeps going like that, and then goes up like that, and goes down, and then goes um, at the last one something like this, and they're all the same uh, shape. I <laughs> just ignore my drawing. How? Uh, yeah, it's my drawing's not the scale. So it goes up like that, and goes around. Here's the arrows. Goes back, goes through, goes like that, and goes all the way here, all the way back to the uh, 360 degrees like that. Yeah, so this is the curve r equals two cosine two theta. So make sure to watch my earlier video to learn more about uh, how I drew that. But also recall right here, yeah, because we want to find out one loop. These are all the same. So recall that this angle across this is theta equals to pi over four. And in fact, this one right here is just again by symmetry, and also by my earlier video. This is pi. Yeah, this is theta equals to negative. Pi uh, over four. That's the angle going across there. So let's look at this shape right here, or this loop. So we'll go a for that for area. Yeah. So to solve the area, recall from my earlier video on the area formula for polar curve. What we do is we look at a small section like this, like this where the this angle across is d theta. And here I just erase the shading to make it look a bit easier. So that's d theta right. here. Here and then basically uh, this little section here. This is just a small and uh, infinitely small uh, angle there. And and recall that the area of a sector of a curve, we'll call this d a in this case, equals two or roughly equals two. It's not exactly that. And this was one half r squared d theta. And that's the area of a sector of a circle. And when you sum this all up from my last video, so make sure to watch my last video on the area formula, we get integral. So this area, and I'll shade this around all the way across, is going to be the integral from negative pi over 4, because we want this bottom shape, all the way to uh, pi over 4 of, now we go 1 half r squared d theta. And then when we plug the r, that's just going to be negative uh, pi over 4 right here, uh, pi over 4, and then 1 half, 1 half, and then where r is cosine 2 theta, so we write cosine uh, 2, yeah, it's going to be squared now because we're squaring it, cosine squared 2 theta, I'll just put this in bracket like that, and then d theta over there, and recall that the cosine curve, it's, uh, yeah, recall. Let's go recall. Uh, cosine. If you had something like this, theta. This is cosine, theta. The way it looks like the curve is something like this, where it is symmetric about this side across here. So that means if we go to the negative side, this is pi over two negative. This is uh, pi over two uh, positive. Yeah, so this means that we could just use, uh, well, you could simplify this range. We could go from 0 to pi over 4 and then put a multiplied by 2. So thus, area is equal to, yeah, area is equal to integral, and I'll put a 2 here from 0 to pi over 4 so that, because it's the same on negative or the positive, and you can even see here, uh, it's just going to be 2 times just going from 0 to pi over 4. It's, it's symmetric about that axis. So this means we have the 1 over 2 cosine squared 2 theta d theta. So the 2's cancel, and this just equals 2. Yeah, so this just equals 2 integral from 0 to pi over 4, cosine, yeah, the 2's cancel, 2 theta, and then d 
uh, Feta, like that. I don't know why it's not writing it properly. And now, before we try to solve that, recall the trig identity. So trig identity, I'll put this, this is the half angle one. I'll put this also in the video description below, so make sure to check it out. And that identity is cosine squared x equals two, one plus uh, cosine two x all over two. But in our case right here, so I'll write in our case, because we're dealing with a two theta. In our case, this x right here is just, just equivalent to the two theta. And the two x would be just two times, uh, yeah, yeah, two times x or two times two theta, which equals to four theta. Yeah, so thus we have, thus we could plug that in. So we get rid of the squared because it's just easier to solve the integral without that. So we have a uh, equals two, Inde uh, yeah, integral from zero to pi over four, and now this is the cosine squared instead of uh, x, yeah, we have the two theta, so this becomes one plus cosine, and now we have that, yeah, which is cosine now two x or four theta, I'll just put it divide by two there, and then d theta. Yeah, just simplify this further, this just equals to one half zero pi over four, one plus cosine four theta d theta, and now we could just easily solve this integral. So this equals to, this is just one half, leave it out there. Integral of one, is this going to be theta? Integral of cosine four theta, that's going to be, well, that's just sine four theta, but include the chain rule, so divide by four, because if you take integral or derivative of sine four theta, that's just cosine four theta times it by the four inside. So that's what we have, and this is from zero to pi over four. So you can plug those inside. We have one half, now we have pi over four evaluated plus sine of four pi over four over four. And these just cancel, we're just left with, that's just sine pi, and then we have to subtract, putting in zero, so zero plus sine of, well, zero, like that. Yeah, so that's what we have, and then uh, we know those values of sine, we could just recall the sine curve, quickly recall it. If we have, this is theta, I'll write this y-axis as sine theta, so then this one just looks something like that and goes up and down, where at this point here is zero, and this is pi, so that's also zero. So that means sine pi goes to zero, sine zero goes to zero. All we're left with now is, well, now we're left with a, the area equals one half of, and the only thing on zero is this pi over four. Pi over four, like that, this just equals two, pi over eight, and there's our area. area. So yeah, that's pi over eight, it's pretty interesting right there. So if we go all the way back here, this area, this whole loop is just pi over eight, and now there's four loops like that, so four of them is just going to be uh, total area, I'll just write sum of area uh, equals two, that's going to be four times uh, pi over eight, which just equals two uh, pi over two. Yeah, very, very interesting. And yeah, just moved it over there and circled it. So yeah, the total area of this whole thing is pi over two. So yeah, that's all for today. Hope you learn from this uh, quick example. And uh, yeah, you could download these exact notes. Uh, make sure you could download them in, in the link below as also as well. I'll be posting them on steamit.com at mes. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.